Okay, just as a reminder, we were trying to minimize the amount of paper um, knowing that we had to have 24 square inches of print. We knew the margins, but we were trying to minimize the amount of paper used. So we're trying to minimize the overall area of this paper. So we figured out what the area could be found by adding two inches to the width and added three inches to the height. Of course, that provided that we had two variables, so we needed to substitute using our secondary equation um, for the printed area, that it was x times y equals 24, so y'all said sub for x. So we solved that for x divided by y, plugged that in. We tried to simplify that expression as much as possible to make taking the derivative easier, and then you were saved by the bell. Um, so, let's take the derivative. Let's try to be funny. I get a laugh every once in a while. Alright, let's take the derivative. The derivative of 30 is 0. The derivative of 2y would be 2. And the derivative of 72 over y would be negative 72 over y squared. Alright, if we rewrite that as 72y to the negative 1, Power rule, bring down the negative, subtract 1, so that puts y squared in the denominator. Now we're trying to maximize, or excuse me, we're trying to minimize in this case. So we set that equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So how about we add that 72y squared over to make it positive? And then we got to get, we're solving for y, it's in the denominator. So multiply both sides by the y squared. So we get 72 is equal to 2y squared. Divide by 2, 36 equals y squared. Take the square roots, plus or minus 6. You always want to do that is to make sure that you stay in the habit of when you take a derivative, or excuse me, when you take a square root, you include positive and negative, but negative doesn't make sense in this case um, because you can't have a negative dimension. Um, so, let's see here, if y is 6, then 24 over 6 gives us x, which means that it is 4. So our dimensions are a um, width of 4 inches and a height of 6 inches. For the printed space, let's look back. This is what should be the dimensions of the page, okay? So that's the printed area, 4 by 6, but the dimensions of the actual page would mean that we add 2 inches to the width and we add 3 inches to the height, so the actual page is 6 by 9 inches. Okay, so be careful with problems like that, that you recognize... Um, <clears throat> what dimensions they're actually asking for. Okay, the 4 by 6 was the printed area. It wanted the dimensions of the actual page. Alright, it's a calculator inactive and it says that the graph of the function negative 5 over x, uh, x minus 2 is concave up for what x values? So when we see concave up, we should think second derivative. So the first derivative is uh, low d high minus high d low all over low squared. <laughs> Simplify that. That's 0. Subtracting a 5 makes it positive 5. But concavity comes from the second derivative, so we need to take the derivative again. So low d high is going to give us 0 minus high d low. Bring down the exponent. Keep the inside the same. Multiply that with the inside all over low squared. So it was already squared, so it becomes to the fourth. Power to a power will multiply. Uh, a few of you, that was a common error on that quiz. Uh, when you raised, I think it was cubed, and you squared it, you said it was to the fifth. It's actually going to be the sixth. Power to a power, you multiply, you don't add. Um, so we get negative 10 times x minus 2. Well, actually, that will, one of those will cancel with one of the ones on the bottom. Okay, so that just becomes x to the third, x minus 2 to the third on the bottom. So your only critical number is 2. So you've got to decide, is it, um, uh, is it positive?
of the negative on which side. So I would plug in 0 and I'd plug in 3. The plug in is the second derivative. So the numerator is always negative. The denominator, if we do 0 minus 2, that's a negative number cubed. That's negative. So negative divided by negative is positive. Uh, with the other one, top row is negative. 3 minus 2 is positive. Cube that, it gives you a positive. So it is concave up when x is less than 2. Oops, that works. There we go. Okay. All right. Uh, questions about that? Make sense? Okay, number two. This one is calculator active, um, but this is the second derivative. Really, you don't need the calculator. All right. Um, looking at this, this is the second derivative. Inflection points come from the second derivative where it's equal to zero. So possible inflection points are two, three, and negative one. But I'm going to, going to go ahead and tell you that there are not three actual inflection points because three is squared and the negative one is to the fourth. Anytime those are those two even powers, they're repeated. When they're even powers, they're going to bounce. You could look at the graph of this to confirm that, but these are going to bounce. There's no change at 3 and negative 1. There's still possible inflection points, but they aren't actually inflection points. So the only change is going to occur at x equals 2. So I believe that there's only one inflection point. Um, but again, it's calculator active, so why not? Uh, plug it in real quick and see where there's actually a sign change. How many times does it actually change signs? Um, okay, but I just wanted to point that out so you don't even have to take the time to graph it. Okay, see it bounces at negative one. Um, it changes at two. It actually goes through the x-axis and it bounces there at uh, three as well. Um, so the only actual inflection point occurs at two, so there's only one. Okay, uh, number three. Suppose that the function is differentiable and the derivative at negative two is equal to zero. So x between negative three and zero, suppose that the second derivative is less than zero. So I'm thinking concave down on that interval. When I see the derivative at negative two is equal to zero, that's a possible max or a min. I haven't even looked at the answer cases yet. I'm just trying to collect information. Then at x equals negative two, it must be true that f has. Okay, so pretty much they're trying to get us to determine whether this possible maximum or minimum, which one is it? Okay, if the curve is concave down, then a maximum is created. Okay, because negative 2 fits within this interval, it's concave down on that interval, so that means that that critical point is a relative maximum. We can't say it's absolute um, because we don't know, we're not given um, a closed interval. So, and we don't know whether this, is, if it's just a quadratic, then it's going to be an absolute maximum. But we don't know that it's a quadratic. We don't know enough to say that it's absolute. Um, and you can't have both a max and a min at one point. That's not going to happen. Um, so that eliminates the last three choices. It's just, is it... Um, a max or a min because of its concavity. And if it's concave down, that's a maximum. Concave up is a minimum. That's one of those opposite kind of things. You think concave up would be max, just that we associate up with max, but it's, it's not. Okay? Okay, so that's that one. And then the last question, number four, if the second derivative is this quadratic, and our function is concave up. Okay, so we've got to find our critical numbers. Okay, so let's factor. What is that? x plus 4 times x minus 3. 
So our critical numbers are negative 4 and positive 3, or excuse me, our critical numbers are possible inflection points. So let's try negative 5, 0, and 4. I think it's easier to plug it into the factored form. Negative 5 plus 4 is a negative. Negative 5 minus 3 is a negative, so we get positive 2 left of negative 4. When we plug in 0, we get a positive times a negative, so that's negative. When we plug in 4, we get a positive times a positive. So when the second derivative is positive, our original is concave up. So that contributes it to negative 4. And after 3, I don't like that they use brackets, but uh, they don't have another option. So that would have to be what it is. I prefer technically parentheses are more mathematically correct because at negative 4 and at, at positive 3, it's neither. Okay, so just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes, we're good. Okay, all of, all of those are correct. Any questions you guys want to ask about those? I know I'm making them seem really, really simple, but really these weren't that tricky. Um, I have a feeling maybe it was the factoring. Did y'all get the opposite signs on this last one? Um, negative 3 and positive 4. That may be a pitfall there. Or you may have gotten the signs mixed up. Um, this one y'all probably took 3. Because you saw 3. But it is possible. You got to make sure. To be an inflection point, there actually has to be a change to be an actual inflection point. Okay, not just a critical number of the second derivative or a possible inflection point. Um, for the first one, it was probably just computation. Okay, so just be careful with those numbers.